Good afternoon, Kitchener, Waterloo, and worldwide. This is DJ JD coming at you live from the 102.7 CKMS FM Radio Waterloo Studios for Wide World of Motorsports. You are listening on Rogers Digital Cable Channel 946 in Southern Ontario. Or potentially worldwide at www.radiowaterloo.ca slash listen or 102.7 in the 519 on the FM dial in Kitchener-Waterloo region in Ontario, Canada. We are live in the studio until 2 p.m. this afternoon. And this is CKMS Wide World of Motorsports. Check us out, CKMS WWOM on Facebook. Twitter. You can check all our episodes out on demand. YouTube. It's, it's great. It's huge. You can also visit us, Radio Waterloo, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course, our, compa- our, our other show, our other page, actually, Unforgettable NASCAR on Facebook. And uh, we just hit 28,000 followers, which is great. And not only that, check out my other show, The Underground Sound Project, TSP on FM, Facebook and Twitter. Got some news coming up about my new show uh, on another radio station, which is great. Itch. But today, we're going to be talking about how Kyle Larson gets NASCAR Xfinity Series win at Daytona after Justin Haley uh, got a penalty. We're talking about the results from Sunday's or Saturday night's race where Eric Jones got his first victory in quite an action-packed fall all, all brawled race um, and then Indy Carr James James Hinchcliffe the mayor of Hinchtown took a win in uh, at Iowa which is great <laughs> and then to end off the weekend we saw Travis Pastrana land Caesars Palace jump in Las Vegas that was really cool to be able to see and all of that uh, and more right here on CKMS Wide World of Motorsports now let's get in to the Wide World of Motorsports Sa- Friday night Kyle Larson took the checkered flag for the NASCAR Xfinity race at Daytona and uh, he became the race winner and what he thought he wasn't when Justin Haley uh, thought he took the W and then basically because of a penalty where I guess you can't go below the yellow line at all I suppose he was stripped of what would have been his first win in just his second career Xfinity race NASCAR declared he went below the double yellow lines to improve his position as the race field approached the start finish line which at a restrictor plate like Daytona and Talladega Super Speedway is something that's frowned upon. And as a result, NASCAR put Haley 18th at the finish, the final driver on the lead lap. Larson was declared the winner as he was a close second behind Haley, and it was Larson's second consecutive series win, adding to his victory uh, the previous weekend at Chicagoland Speedway. Larson led 39 laps, tying him with Ryan Blaney for the most in what was scheduled to be a 100 lap event but was extended to 105 by a late race caution. Larson also won both of two stages which included the first 60 laps of the race. Um, Elliot Sadler still winless at Daytona finished second for the sixth time there and his third consecutive P2 finish at the track. He led 17 laps um, for the first part of the race but making him the only driver other than Larson to play be able to lead any laps worth considerable mention there and uh, Blaney led most of the second stage getting off of pit road with a fuel only stop during the yellow flag at the end of the first stage lap 55 58 relinquished the position to Larson and then uh, Blaney got the lead again but 
we ended up seeing a, uh, quite the finish. I, I think that's a dumb rule. I think they got to get rid of that rule. Uh, people wonder why there's something wrong with the sport, and I think it's because there's a rule like that where what, what looked like on camera would have been a great finish, per se, if, if they're a famous cup driver in that position. I'm sure that would have been hailed as like a Dale Earnhardt move. But in this situation, some no-name guy will of course get the penalty and give Larson the win. That's how I see it. Can't, I can't call that to be how that's actually what NASCAR did, but it's a possibility uh, for sure. Let us know what you think. CKMS, WWO, on Facebook and Twitter. Should they get rid of that rule? At a super speedway track like Talladega in Daytona. We want to know what you want to hear for next week's episode. Uh, okay. So then we ended up seeing... Nothing ended up getting better this weekend uh, at Daytona International Speedway. We saw a demolition derby. In which Kurt Busch said was the Stenhouse DD. Stenhouse demolition derby. I think everyone was giving Stenhouse a hard time. We'll get to that here in a second. But the Coke Zero Sugar 400... Went eight laps over its schedule. 160 Jones passed the reigning series champion on the backstretch of the final lap and held on to win just by a hundred hundredth of a second. But Jones battled back from a damage sustained from a multi car wreck on lap 65, an accident that cost him a lap, which is pretty impressive. And um, we ended up seeing AJ Allmendinger, who ran third after a nine car wreck, ended up with the first overtime attempt with Truex approaching the finish line just short of the end of the white flag lap that wreck provided the coupe de grasse for kevin harvick clint boyer jimmy johnson and trevor bain only 20 of the 40 cars that started the race were running at the finish it was it was kind of edge of seat for the whole race and only 13 finished on the lead lap casey kane came home fourth after leading 17 laps and chris busher ran fifth matching his finish in this uh in the season opening daytona 500 and we also saw a considerable mention uh frick what's his face earnhardt or oh, the other earnhardt there finished 11th and then dj kennington from canada managed to actually get up to 13th which is pretty impressive so wow and uh we ended up seeing on the restart on lap 167 that truex got the lead from a push from Kane, but he couldn't hold it on the outside lane and it was more organized as the final lap unfolded and Jones got a strong run through turns one and two and uh, Trix had posted only one other top five finish, a second in the 2016 Daytona 500 from a couple of years ago and 26 previous starts at the two and a half mile super speedway. Two massive wrecks in stage two, both involving Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Social media exploding uh, Roush, then, uh, the, the team fit at Twitter said they were going to shut off their notifications during that. Um, and no, a lot of people were pointing their fingers for Stenhouse Jr. And I, I actually disagree. And we'll get into that right now. Because on lap 54, Brad Keselowski was running behind leader William Byron when his number two Ford turned off the front bumper of Ricky Stenhouse uh, his Ford Fusion, which slammed into the number 41 of Kurt Busch and ignited a turn three wreck that involved 24 cars and wiped out all three Team Penske entries, along with Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Daniel Suarez, and pole winner Chase Elliott. But Kislowski didn't blame Stonehouse. He pointed the finger at Byron, which I think was absolutely correct, and who moved down the track to put a late block on the number two and forced Kislowski to check up. Anyone who knows anything about racing at a super speedway, if you've even played a friggin' cheap video game, that at least has enough of that when you're in the back stretch and you're first place and there's a line of like maybe uh six seven rows deep two cars wide behind you and you're playing the high side you're playing the low side and you can manipulate get a push from each side but what had happened was this brad koslowski had such a big rush on the low line i it looked like byron was trying to go down and he kind of ended up i think if byron stayed high he would have avoided that wreck and and a lot of other troubles. So um, that forced Kislowski to check up and had to have uh, Stenhouse wreck him. But um, Byron stayed out in front of all that, and so did Stenhouse. And uh, that didn't stay the same that way for long. He was leading 
again on lap 65 when Senhouse tapped the left rear of Kyle Busch's Toyota and sent the number 18 spinning into Byron Chevrolet. And both Byron and Busch were knocked out of the race in the accident. And actually, Kurt Busch, or sorry, Kyle Busch, with a, with a very classy move, ended up running over to the 24 car and just checked on uh, Byron to see if he was okay. And uh, that was that was cool to see of a champion, the dude, make sure one of the young guys was okay. But again, in a situation where I'm gonna say Kyle Busch had a whole almost he had a whole almost two car lengths of space on his outside. I think oh, for sure car length space on his outside. Not sure what Kyle Busch was doing in the middle of the turn in the lane. Kind of he was forcing the issue a little bit on Ricky Stenhouse, and I think a lot of people were mad at him. So I think there's a little bit of some rage there. And look what happened. If you, if you actually look at the video, Kyle Busch was in the middle of of the turn. I don't know what he was doing, but again. The blame pointed at Stenthouse. I'm not sure if there's hate or anything like that. CKMSWWM wants to know. Check us out. Twitter, Facebook. We want to know. Is there a little bit too much hate on Stenhouse for whatever reason? Is there a bias on Stenhouse for that rack? I think I think they're overdoing that. Uh, but only in the end, we saw quite an eventful. We saw a historic uh, Daytona 400 race and... Uh, saw a first time win we saw eric jones get his first win before chase elliott that's crazy absolutely crazy definitely saw history in the making saturday night now sunday we saw james hinchcliffe the mayor of hinchtown would appear to be a more of a decisive move with 40 laps remaining in the 300 sweeping to the inside of a pass for joseph newgarden Hinchcliffe had made a race deciding call in the final six laps when Ed Carpenter began to spin before Takuma Satu uh, clattered into Carpenter and straightened him out with the caution thrown for debris. Hinchcliffe chose not to pit when the full course caution was called, unlike nearest rival New Garden, but the pace car took the field to the checkered flag before the restart could take place. That meant New Garden threw away a podium place, ending up fourth. Hinchcliffe's deserved win came despite New Garden dominating the majority of the race. Uh, ended up lapping all but maybe five cars by 100 laps in the race. And after basically, uh, it was definitely a quite. I uh, that was one of the f I have watched an Indy race for the first time, and that was it. And Hinchcliffe built such a he, he was let down from not being able to get into the Indy. And, uh, you know, now be able to win a race. He hasn't won a race since um, Long Beach of last year. So there you go. Uh, maybe we'll see him take that momentum into next weekend when we will be at the Honda Indy. Uh, so that'd be really cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And then finally, we saw quite some history take place. Let's go down, I guess you could say. Um, if you're one who's into... Even just in the past, of, of your, if you're a fan of Evil Knievel, there was the ultimate tribute that was paid to the legend. And uh, Travis Pastrana, who is actually a former NASCAR uh, Xfinity and Truck Series driver, he was paying homage to the legendary daredevil, Evil Knievel. And he successfully recreated three of his most iconic jumps on a sweltering Sunday in Las Vegas. Star vaulted over 52 flattened cars and 16 Greyhound buses in a vacant lot behind Planet Hollywood Resort before successfully landing and jump over the ornamental fountains at Caesar Palace, a stunt that nearly took Evil Knievel's life on New Year's Day in 1967. The jumps were part of Evil Live, which is a three-hour tribute to his legacy that aired live on History Channel in partnership with Nitro Circus, which is co-founded by Pastrana. And he made the jumps on an Indian Scout FTR 750, which was a motorcycle that did resemble the original, which was people were a lot of people saying it wasn't the exact motorcycle that Harley da that uh, the Harley Davidson that Knievel did use. That uh, was a little it was a little bit more heavier. This bike was actually made. I've noticed it was out of the carbon fiber paneling, but it still looked cool nonetheless. And he paid tribute to wearing the leathers and uh, the cape and the boots. And uh, he covered 143 feet over crutch cars, 192 feet over buses, um, and then 149 feet over the, the fountains. 
And then he made a final jump in the water. <laughs> and that was really cool to be able to see. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that is the world, the wide world of motorsports this past weekend. Uh, let's get into some music for your drive for the evening. We're going to get started off with a classic. Here's Brian Adams, Summer of 69. You're listening to CKMS, Wide World of Motorsports. This is DJ JD on Radio Waterloo 102.7. CKMS, the sound of the community. The guy who does Danger Zone, CCR, Beach Boys, BC Boys, Bon Jovi, Lenny Kravis, Aerosmith, Brian Adams, all for your drive today. Uh, We also kicked off the show, which you can check out on demand on YouTube tonight. Check out uh, the brand new episode. I think episode 13. This is episode 13 of CKMS WWM. So check it out. Thank you for listening. It's fantastic to be able to have you on. Maybe listening to us on www.radiowaterloo.ca slash listen. We're on just 946. I hope I didn't say 945 earlier in the show. Uh, and... <laughs> And of course, 102.7 and the 519. You can check us out CKMS, WWOM, on Facebook and Twitter, on demand on YouTube. And of course, our other show, TSP on FM. And, and our companion page for this, our CKMS Wide Warner Sports, always proud to shout out Unforgettable NASCAR. Check it out on Facebook. Just got our 28,000 followers. So that's fantastic. Make sure you check us next weekend in Toronto for the Honda Indy. We're going to be there for sure for the NASCAR Pinties race on Saturday. So make sure you head on down to the streets of the Six where there's going to be some NASCAR action coming your way. So make sure you stay tuned, uh, of course, here to Radio Waterloo. Radio Waterloo! <laughs> um, well, that is up for another edition. Make sure you stay tuned for whatever's next. Make sure you take care of yourselves and, of course, each other. Spay to do to your pets. Help control the pet population. Always remember to te- don't text and drive. Don't drink and drive. Park and spark. Always wear a raincoat. Look up your worker and your human rights. Join Texas Book Club. Remember to lock your doors at night. And, of course, for the working man and the working woman, there is no opposition to the genius switch. That is the bottom line, folks. We'll see you down the road. <laughs>